Um, it is Tuesday, Higurashi time. <sighs> Where do I begin with the recap today? Uh, what happened on Saturday? I gotta be honest. I think I've talked about this before, somewhat in a joking manner, but also in a re very real manner. I sometimes review past streams because I'm like, did I, did I come at them with the right energy? And I think I was pretty low energy last Saturday. There's a couple of reasons probably why, uh, which I won't necessarily delve into <laughs> at the moment or really need to or care to. But um, I don't know. I reviewed the last footage on Saturday or the last stream on Saturday. I was like, ah, it's kind of low energy. Maybe it was also because like there wasn't a ton happening as far as I think I think we kind of set up a lot of what's going to happen maybe tonight in Higurashi or maybe on next Saturday or, you know, this coming up Saturday. Basically, what I remember from Saturday's stream is that everyone, everyone knows the situation. Everyone not only knows the situation, it feels like, like with a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, what... Ketchy got himself into with the bad group. Bad group being blonde haired lady, Tomatake, Shino. They were they were naughty and they went into that storehouse. Ill advised against uh against good common sense. And uh Basically, Saturday stream felt a lot of everyone being like, we know you were there with them, no matter how much you protest and say you weren't with them, and you're such a bad liar, Ketchy. And I mean everyone. I mean fucking, we had uh, Oishi, we had uh, Mion, we had Shikada's 1, 2, 3, 4 that make up the background noise for a lot of the the random bug noises that we're currently listening to. They all knew. They all knew he was lying. That, that he's lying and that he was with Xion in the thing. I think it is irrefutable proof. Because <laughs> not only do the... When they approach him, they ask him and then he's like... And then he tries to double down. And he's like, no, I, I swear, I don't know what you... Uh, I wasn't with uh, Xion, uh, whatever... Yeah, I totally saw Rika doing her dance thing. Yeah, totally. And they're like, hey, I know you're fucking lying. I'm going to ask again, Ketchy. Were you hanging out with Xion and the other two weird adults at the storehouse? And he was like, no. <laughs> Which I don't necessarily blame him for doubling down. Because until you're ultimately caught... You might as well. You've already lied, so just dig it. Just keep digging deeper. Honestly, <laughs> you're a kid. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> now, I would make the argument. I don't want it to get. Don't get it twisted. I would make the argument that he shouldn't have lied in the first place. But my argument here is: once you've lied, just go as deep as you can. Fuck it. At that point, fuck it. Despite what your, uh. Your fear, your inner paranoia tells you, just keep, just keep lying. Don't come clean. You already fucked up. There's no coming back. And trust me, I'm very good at advice. Giving advice, life advice to people. Fictional characters as well. <laughs> just keep, just keep lying. It's fine. Again, I say, what's the worst that can happen? Someone might come back and say, well, what's the worst that could happen? What happened at the end of chapter one? Well. Claw my own throat out. Fool me once. Shame on me. Maybe if it happens again here in chapter two. Then shame on me. Shame on you. Shame on me. Shame on everyone, honestly. And that's basically all I have to say about the recap from Saturday. <laughs> oh, it's only Tuesday, dude. Oh, it's going to be a long week. Oh, my God. Oh, my body's not ready for this week. Good recap? Thank you. I thought so, too. 
I'm just gonna have to assume that that's definitely not sarcasm, you know? But, uh... I mean, I, I, I think I pretty much set up. Like I said, I think, uh... <laughs> I think I think uh, I think it makes sense. Like I said, I think Saturday was pretty uneventful. Other than it was basically showing and reinforcing that literally everyone knows he's lying, and he him lying is not fooling anyone. Everyone knows, and we even got the thing. I think this was on Saturday where Mion asked him. And we learned the whole, like, uh, through, um, this is all start, starting to unlock in my brain. Oishi, we got more in-depth info about Mion and her family background, and Shion's ba family background by extension, um, about how they're this powerful, controlling group, family group here in uh, Hinamazawa. Um, and then you pair that with when Mion first asked him about it and was like hey were you with them and he's like no 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 and he's so insistent on saying no she was like even though like i said it's kind of like a wink wink nudge nudge situation she was like fine i'll make sure i tell everyone else that you weren't with them which lead two things one at first you're probably like oh that's good she oh, i got my friend in my in my back pocket willing to defend me but what that does later on i found out or not found out, but basically you can surmise is the town is gossiping and knows that you did something probably most of the town, the village doesn't want you to do, <laughs> which is go into the storehouse because, and we knew also in, especially here in early chapter two, just how powerful, and we even got some of this in chapter one, but how powerful the village and its people are as like a, a group. They got power in strong numbers. We're very much often reinforced about how they were able to stop the the dam construction project from happening. And we saw here in early episode or chapter two here uh, of how they mobilize well against like uh, the bullies that you know attacked uh, Ketchy for kicking their motorcycle or whatever. Um, so what basically is saying is it seems as though she confirmed oh. Everyone in the village thinks you did, and they're talking behind your back, and that's no good for you if this if this gains steam kind of thing. So, again, if I had to put money down, I would think she didn't actually... I don't think she's fooled by Ketchy at all. I think Mion's actually pretty damn smart in this case, and she's not dumb. Or she might have even directly seen like him leave with Shion to the thing. I, do, I don't want to X that out as a possibility. So she knows he's lying straight to her face. She doesn't want to keep pressing the issue. But she let him know, basically, indirectly, hey, <laughs> the whole village is saying that you're doing this thing with Xion. You're not supposed to. Scary prospect. Honestly, I think I would expect either tonight or on Saturday when we stream this, um, I would assume a lot of bad things are going to start happening to Ketchy. So there we go. An addendum to the, the recap. An addition the recap anyway after dinner without the energy to watch tv i climbed into the futon in my bedroom and let my head be overtaken by gloomy thoughts i told rika chan anything and everything oh yeah this was at the towards the end of saturday's thing he came clean to rika that's an important that's probably an important thing i probably shouldn't forget in the recap but i'm very glad this game <laughs> just now jogged my memory he goes to Rika and indirectly through a dumb little cat metaphor and dog metaphor. Uh, he's like, I'm in trouble, Rika. And Rika's like, I will help you. So Rika knows. He was at least clean to Rika about the whole situation, basically. Or at the, I mean, I have to re, I mean, I won't be able to check it now, I don't think. But um, at the very least, he was like, I'm in trouble. A bad thing is happening. I don't know if he divulged every... Well, he's saying here he said anything and everything. So <laughs> maybe I shouldn't... Maybe he did just say everything. But um, hey, if if Mion is one of the people you lied to and that you might get in trouble with, I would say good number two to have in your back pocket here 
is Rika. I've long talked about, I like Mion as a character. I think Rika is a great character. Both, I like them as a character, and also I think Rika can massively help them. Much better than Satko. And I love her to death, sort of. No, that's a little strong. I don't love her to death. But Rina, she's fine. But probably not going to be able to help you out of a squeeze. Anyway. I told Rika Chen anything and everything. She had seemed trustworthy at the time, but had that really been the right choice? The more I looked back on it, the less I understood what Rika Chen was saying. Not only did she know about Takano-san and Tomotake-san's death, but she spoke to them, spoke of them as if she, uh, she were a concerned party. After all this time in my futon, I began to tremble fiercely. Had I been lured in by Rika Chan's sweet smile and told her things I shouldn't have? Oh no, is he gonna like regret that he talked to Rika about this? Is this where his paranoia is gonna? Is he gonna start getting really scared of Rika now? Hmm. I should have continued to feign ignorance. I shouldn't have shown her such a weak side of me. My emotions are a mix of regret and fear, and I colored the darkness of the night with an additional layer of terror. Suddenly, a knock. I might have yelped. That's how surprised I was. Keiichi! Keiichi! Saki kara yonder zo! Turn this up just slightly. Uh, I've been calling your name for a while! Denwa da! You have a phone call! Sonozaki san kara! It's from, it's from Sonozaki san. I'm telling you, I don't know when or if it's maybe already happened, but I've mentioned this before. The fact that <laughs> it, it's such an easy thing, right? But it's such an easy call, in my opinion. The whole Sonozaki on the phone type situation, it's either has already happened or is going to happen and it's going to be a thing where since he can't directly, it's not FaceTime, right? They can't see the person on the actual line. And if, if someone just answers the phone and says, oh, it's Sonazaki, and he's just like, oh, if they have similar voices or whatever, and he was already dumb about them being different people, he's going to divulge some information somehow, either by being tricked or just blurting something out on the phone thinking that it is Xion or Mion or the other way around, right? It's going, it's bound to happen. It's too easy of a setup here, <laughs> and I've talked about it now multiple times, and it might have already happened. And I think I've said it that it almost I was so confident it happened already, maybe. I also <laughs> famously said a couple of streams ago though in this that I also think <laughs> that that Mion was pretending to be Oishi on the phone. That one, maybe not as much of a hit. I'm still not willing to throw out that theory. I still want to hold on to that that, that was the case. But maybe less likely. It was Dad. I reached out for the cordless phone uh, through the gap in my door. So, Sonozaki-san, which one? Sonozaki-san, which one? Ane? The older sister or Imoto? the younger? I don't know. <laughs> the dad's like, I don't give up. I, I don't know, ask for yourself. I took the receiver and buried myself in my futon again. But, uh, hello? Mion? Mion? Shion? Or is it Shion? It's me. Shion. Shion. Good evening. I practically jumped out of bed. It was Shion, who I hoped so desperately would call me back last night. Oh, yeah. Because he freaked out at her. And then he was like, when they parted, he was like, man, I really hope she calls me. And then he stayed up all night. Hoping for the phone call. Desperate. Shion, <laughs> um, sorry about last night. I got all riled up. Oh, and he freaked out about the whole, it was the noise thing. The noise at the storehouse. She was insistent that it was happening. He was like, what the fuck are you talking about? So much so that he was defiant. He was like, what the fuck are you talking? Are you fucking with me? Basically is what he was saying. He's like, are you fucking with me right now? There was no noise. And she's like, there was a noise. What was that noise? He's like, he's so mad that she was asking him. 
So he freaked out at her. She, uh... And she's like, oh, it's fine, it's whatever. I heard what sounded like a deep sigh on the other end. You and me are in the same position, aren't we? I shouldn't have blamed you for everything like that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, so please cheer up. Oh wait, no, he actually went in deeper. He was saying that it was her fault for dragging him into it, wasn't it? Now that's starting to come back to me. Hmm, uh, blame. Pass the blame around. I called you because I'm in a better mood. If you're sorry, then I'll forgive you. So please stop apologizing. Uh, one sec, adjusting that. Okay, Shion's tone still sounded a little angry, but for the moment, she said she'd forgive me. Uh, you're right, too. We're tied to the same fate. Making sure the other is alright is the only way to guarantee our own safety. Yeah, I agree. We absolutely need to share whatever information we have. So that we don't die, like Takano-san and Tomotake-san did. Gulp. I force myself to swallow a solid drop of saliva. Then, let's continue from where we left off. You'll listen without getting angry this time, right? Ah. Yeah. I'll be fine. Firstly, it seems sneaking into the ritual storehouse was more of a taboo than we thought. Takano-san and Tomotake-san's miserable ends, terrible enough that you could call them a warning, they were more than enough to make me believe that. The culprits killed us two, the ones responsible for sullying the storehouse. They'll come for us next. I know you want to deny that, but please accept it. It'll be too late to believe me after you've disappeared, okay? Uh, I got it. You can never be too careful after all. I don't want to accept it either. To think, to think that sneaking a peek at that museum of torture devices deserves death like that. I don't want to believe it. That's what a taboo is. For those who honor it, if one breaks the taboo, no matter how smart and innocent their intentions were, they wouldn't be forgiven. Let's report anything we notice that seems strange. If we connect all the tiny pieces that we have, then just maybe we'll find out who killed them, or maybe even the truth behind the incidents of the previous years. We can find the key that'll resolve everything. <laughs> Hmm, you're right. You're right about that. All I was doing was waiting in fear, but Shion had already, but Shion had already thought that far ahead. Given how trustworthy she felt, I became embarrassed over how passive I was being. Then I'll start, since I suggested it. I feel like somebody's been watching me lately. What? It might be my imagination, but... I'll tell you anyway. I think it's just me, but if you feel like you're being watched too, Kichen, then... Maybe it's not just my imagination. So, 
そういうことなら安心しろ。Well, don't worry. 少なくとも、俺の方は大丈夫だ。At the very least, everything's been fine for me. I think. As I spoke with Xion, I thought back on today. I had no ground to say that everything was fine. So, this is. I see. There are Kino say to you, Kotonishimasuna. Kate and Mochu is the good side. Then I suppose with my imagination, but you be careful too, Kichan. Now, I don't know if this is if the story is going to bend this way, but I bet you if if Mion does get to murder Xion, <laughs> I bet that feels good. <laughs> I bet that. I, I bet that. <laughs> Now, I'm not saying I'm advocating for sibling murder、uh, situations or anything, just in general. I, I gotta put that on the record. Since this is a recorded thing, I gotta put that on the record. I'm just saying if you have a sister, a twin sister, a twin sibling who kind of gets on your nerves, does things they're not supposed to, starting to steal your man. And then you have an excuse to murder them, perhaps? Uh, alright. <laughs> I'm just saying.、Uh, be especially careful when you're by yourself in public. I'm in Okinomiya, so I won't be alone very often, but you live in Hinamazawa. There'll be a lot of times you'll be alone. Please be extra careful. You're right. Yeah, I'll be careful. Also, about my sister, has she been acting strange lately? Your sister? Oh, Mion, right? What do you mean by acting strangely? Well, yesterday I. She came to me and asked me where I was on the night of Watanagashi. What? Uh, that's. She asked me too. The day before yesterday, I think. Mion asked me. I see. I told her I wasn't there. What did you say? I did the same thing. I just dodged the question. Poorly. Editor's note poorly. Both of us gave a quiet sigh of relief. Ever since the night of the festival, my sister has been acting strangely. We can't be too careful, so just be aware, okay? Mian was acting strangely. Aside from her asking me about the night of Wadanagashi, she hadn't seemed too out of the ordinary. At least, from my point of view. Her twin sister, though, was saying she was acting weird. Maybe it was such a slight change that a stranger like me wouldn't be able to notice. Got it. I'll start being careful. I'll always have Rena with me on my way back from school, so she shouldn't end up alone with me on very often. Please, be careful. If there's anything that's bothering you, you can tell me. Alright. Okay, then, is there anything you want to tell me, Ki Chan? My turn. That's right. Maybe I should report on Oishi san asking me the same question at the library. Oh, that time when you were too slow to escape? Yeah. Oishi san asked me pretty forcefully. Whether I was with Takano san and Tomotake san that night, and whether I had seen you. Oishi san seemed to have seen the four of us together. Oishi san seemed to have seen the four of us together. Oishi san seemed to have seen the four of us together. 
坂野さんたちが最後に会った人間ということになりますからね。From the police's point of view, that would make us the last people who had seen them. 私たちに興味を持つのは、ある意味当然でしょうね。I suppose, given that, it's only natural that they'd be interested in us. こっちもごまかしたけど、かえって興味を持たれたかもしれない。I evaded the question then too, but that might have just made them more interested. There's no way I could have trickled the er tr trickled tricked that sly old fox o i s h i s a n My troubled countenance would have only made him even more certain. Nah, Shion. Hey, Shion? Since they're the police, shouldn't we just tell them? Mushiro or that's no joke, you know, Kesas or Mikata and Skerno are plus that or Muzo. I mean, considering our situation, I think having them on our side would be a good thing. Shion didn't answer right away. For a few moments, all I could hear was her breathing as she thought about it. So, I was thinking about it. Now that I think of it, Oishi san said there was something possibly shady about Mion. At least, I think that's what he said. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely did. As I explained yesterday, the Sonazaki family holds a lot of influence over Hinamazawa. Oishi is under the impression that the whole village, with the Sonazaki family at the center of it all, is responsible for their、uh, recurrent freak deaths. Sonazaki is at the center of the village, with the Sonazaki family at the center of it all, is responsible for their With the Sonazaki family at the center? Please, don't get angry like you did yesterday, and just listen. I hammered that home before I got too upset. During the Hinamazawa Dam Wars, the priest who everyone was anticipating to lead the anti dam movement acted as though we were unrelated. So the Sonazaki main house rose up to take charge. My sister told you about all the battles that happened, right? Yeah. All of Hinamazawa got together and fought as one. They held protests, brought it to court, and even appeared on TV. In reality, There are many things that happened that were far more extreme. Under the surface, the Sonazaki main house was doing all sorts of illegal things to oppose it. They were acting illegally? For example, they'd sneak into the construction site in the middle of the night and steal equipment or break it and put sugar cubes in the gasoline tanks of the construction vehicles. Hardcore. Gotta appreciate that. Gasoline tank? <laughs> sugar in their gasoline tanks? Why would they? You don't know. It's practically the representative guerrilla tactic. It was used by underground organizations in France in World War II for one. When you put sugar in, the engine gets burned out and breaks down. That's. that's pretty bad, though, isn't it? It was destruction of property, and nothing less. When they beefed up the guard at the construction facility, family turned to attacking important construction personnel who worked there. The government officials who had given permission for the construction, for example, received all kinds of threats. Not just people from the per,、uh, prefectural office either. Apparently, this reached as far as the Ministry of Construction. Uh, as far as I've heard, they even kidnapped a child once. Y Yukai? Kidnapped?
Yes. The child of an important person in the Ministry of Construction who was in charge of the Hinamazawa Dam got spirited away. Then, one day, all of a sudden, he was rescued in the Takatsudo Mountains, which are upstream from Hinamazawa. Apparently, there were never any criminal accusations, but people whispered that there had been a threat to stop the dam construction from happening. Besides that, there are stories about so many different threats that I couldn't possibly list them all. That's. Wow, that's sort of bad, isn't it? Right in the middle of the whole thing, the first incident happened. That's when the dismemberment of the construction manager occurred. People whispered that the Sonazaki family had brought out the principal offender. But of course, he fled and they still haven't found him. When she put it that way, the Sonazaki family definitely seems suspicious. Oishisan even thinks, or even seems to think that the criminal is raced, so he wouldn't talk. Which is pretty reasonable of him. It's even though to make, uh, it's even enough to make me think. That the Sonazaki main house is doing some really shady things behind the scenes, even though I'm related to them. Are you telling me to believe that? That the Sonazaki main house, where Mion lives, has done all those bad things? You're telling me to believe it? Even if you don't, Kichan, the villagers do. While they opposed the dam in the upright uh in upright and lawful ways, the Sonozaki house did the dirty work for them. Everyone believes that, but they fought at the front so they take the brunt of the criticism. So they're respected as sort of heroes of darkness. <sighs> I think I only kn really know one part of it. For example, the really bad stuff, like the kidnapping. I think only a handful of people even know about it, including Grandma. The Sonozaki family is secretive, after all. Secretive, huh? A family so unforthcoming that even Shion, who is related to them, doesn't know everything about them. The Sonozaki family. Unlike Shion, her older twin, Mion, was deeply involved with everything. And that was not a fun thought to entertain. So it my sister, though young, was the one who acted as center of the legal resistance movement. <sighs> Mion's so metal. Mion ga? <laughs> Mion was. Do you koto da yo? What do you mean? Well, her dad is a big shot yakuza. Even when she was little, my sister managed to subjugate a bunch of young street rats. Then she played all sorts of tricks on them and just generally got in their way. Mion did that? Now she's pretty laid back, so it might be hard to imagine. 
she did everything from property damage to threats and even acts of violence. And she was picked up for uh, picked up for it countless times. Though since she was a kid, they could get her released pretty easily. She learned that her age could be used as a weapon. It may have been indiscreet, but I couldn't help but chuckle dryly. She may have been young, but she was certainly still Mion. Even back then, she had already been known for her craftiness. It's nothing to laugh about. Please, take this seriously. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to. She had gotten pretty angry at me. Well, her delinquency soon got her into a position of authority in the Sonazaki main house. It's not unthinkable that Oishi suspects them for the dismemberment incident, and the later ones too. For a few moments, I was dumbstruck at the tales of Mion's past. None of them matched the image I had of her. A younger Mion dirtying her hands all sorts of crimes, giving the damn construction project hell. As, success as the successor to the Sonazaki main family, she was always right at the center of the vortex of strange incidents occurring year after year. Was that really the Mion I know? Maybe the one I know isn't the real Mion. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't bring myself to accept these images of Mion I was hearing from another person. Well, back to the main subject. I just wanted you to know that my sister is someone worth being cautious around. Please, be careful. I didn't want to understand. Mian was a fantastic friend. She would never do something to back me into a corner like that. She did ask me pretty harshly about the night of the festival, but even that, it wasn't like she'd said it in a mean way or anything. Alright. I'll make sure to be careful. Her sisters were related by blood, but within the Sonazaki family, we're basically of a different class. I want you to recognize how distant my position is from hers. Please. The more Shion tells me about Mion, the less I understand who Mion is. The Mion I know wasn't a dangerous person. She joked around, smiled a lot, and was full of passion. Now that I'd realized I had I held such a view towards her, Sharon was telling me to change it. To be careful around the best friend ever. To doubt her. The idea was very sad and painful. Now, about Oishi? If you think it's a good idea, then I think we should give him the information he needs. I think getting the police on our side will work in our favor. You thought so too, Shion? It's just, at the moment, like I explained, the police have their eyes on the Sonozaki family already. Oishi in particular completely believes that they're the masterminds behind the serial incidents. That includes me, of course. So, I don't really want much to do with Oishi. Oh, I was gonna say, why don't, why don't, why doesn't uh, Keji just bring Oishi to the Angel Mort? And then the three of them can all talk at the same time. Her on the clock, of course. <laughs> uh, I see. If Oishi-san had found out about the Sonozaki family strife-filled history, then he probably wouldn't be very happy with Shion either. At last, I understood Mion's indis uh, instinctive dislike for Oishi-san. It's probably out in the open at this point, but try not to give my name to him. If you agree to that, then I don't think there's a problem with you telling him anything. I got it. I won't mention your name.
The police's investigative ability should be quite a reliable weapon for us right now. If Oishi tells, uh, tells you anything interesting, then let me know as well. Yeah, of course. We'll share information and investigate together. Who killed Takano-san and Tomotake-san? Who was after us? Until we know, we need to defend ourselves. Anything else? Besides what Oishi told you, I mean? If anything has happened, no matter how minor, please tell me. Aside from my discussion with Oishi-san. Oh. Should I tell her? That I revealed everything to Rika-chan? Rika-chan was acting like she knew something I didn't. She told me to leave it to her. But what? Ah, that's right. When I was talking to her, I mentioned Xion's name too. Was that a mistake? I felt like Xion would get angry. Nothing else? Kei-chan? I had remained quiet for a little while, so Xion encouraged me to speak, unable to bear the silence. Uh... Uh, um... As I struggled with what to say, Xion addressed me instead. It doesn't sound like it, so can I ask you something? I just heard this myself. Is it true that old man Kimiyoshi went missing? The old man Kimiyoshi? My gut told me that was the name of the mayor. You mean the mayor? Wait, Xion, you haven't heard? I don't know anything. I just overheard my dad talking about it on the phone again. I realized I shouldn't have said that. Here in Hinamazawa, the things that happened around this time, when Oyashiro-sama's curse would occur, would all be covered up. Yeah. Actually, last night, after a meeting, he didn't come home, so all of Hinamazawa was confused. They searched all through the village, but if they found him, then I haven't heard. The police should be searching for him as well. <sighs> Why didn't you tell me something that important right away? She shouted angrily at me, bringing all her emotion to bear. Sorry, I thought you already knew. I didn't want to hide it or anything. The receiver was silent. Did Xion get mad again and hang up? Hey, Xion. Hello? Kitchen. Oh. Kitchen, what? What should I do? Xion's tiny, confused voice sounded like it belonged to a different person than the one yelling a few seconds ago. What's wrong? Tell me. We're not keeping secrets from each other, right? Xion hesitated for a long while, but then she confessed. I'm sorry. I... well, I didn't mean to hide it. It was just that, well, the conversation got turned around and... We're on the same side, right? I won't get mad, so tell me honestly. Xion still hesitated for a few moments. Then, in a resigned voice, she continued. What? <laughs> I... Old man Kimiyoshi, I... I told him everything. Xion seemed to think I would yell at her right away after... Or right after she said that, so I heard her catching her breath. Contrary to what she thought, I was a little relieved. She only had done the same thing I had when I confessed everything to Rika-chan. So, in as gentle a voice as I could, so as to not set her off, I responded. 
相談できる心安い人なんだろ Old man Kimiyoshi, he's someone you feel comfortable confiding to, Shion. Hi. Yes. He would, when I was little, he was really nice to me. Shion felt the same pain as the rest of us from the mayor's disappearance. She had a different kind of strength from Mion, and as she continued, her voice sounded truly sad and pained. All I did was play tricks on him, but he would always just smile. He listened to anything I had to say. He was such a kind person. Calm down, Shion. It's not like he's dead, right? Don't lose heart so easily. Shion didn't answer. Even as I said it myself, I didn't think we'd ever find the missing mayor again. We probably wouldn't even figure out if he was alive or dead. Shion must have been thinking the same thing. That right? Or night? <laughs> that, that, night. that night, I told the mayor. That we, that we snuck into the ritual storehouse. Also that someone saw us and was out to get us. Does the mayor know how, absurd, uh, how absurdly Takano-san and Tomotake-san died? Yes. He knew about it. I told him that they died by Oyashiro-sama's curse, and that I could be made a sacrifice to calm his anger. I just said straight out. Oh. Right. Sorry. What then? Old man Kimiyoshi didn't get angry. He smiled, then told me that if I was properly sorry about it, there was no way I'd be deemed away. He was really smiling, and he told me to leave it to him. Until she unstopped sobbing, I was unable to find the words for her. I couldn't imagine what kind of person the mayor was, nor what Xion's relationship with him was like. Words of comfort, however, mean so much to us when we're about to be crushed by anxiety. Today, Rikuchen taught me that too. If someone who gave me such a sense of security were to disappear, then I could guess what kind of shock Xion was in. It's my fault. Because I... I revealed everything. Stop it, Shion. It's not your fault. No! It is my fault. I I told him everything. Oh my Kimiyoshi found out about everything. So he has to have been killed. It was right after I told him, after all. Disappeared the same night that I confessed, and he told me everything was going to be alright. He found out. So he became involved. I should never have told him! All this should have just been our fault. Only the four of us. It wasn't something I should have told to someone else. He got killed because I told him. He got killed because he knew. He got killed because I revealed it. Hey, stop. If they were doing that, then they would obviously have killed you before killing the mayor. The order is all wrong. You or I should have been killed first. Why the hell would someone else get killed first? No, it's an order. 
They must be planning to kill us, last of all. Huh? N -n huh? What? They're not killing the first people who come to mind. They start by killing those you're close to. And then after they've caused you so much pain, they'll kill us. That must be what they're doing. I said calm down. Shion, you're in shock. You're panicking. The mayor's disappearance has nothing to do with you. It's unconnected. It's not related to Takano-san and Tomotaka-san dying at all either. My words came out as a scream, as if I were shouting them at myself. No! It is connected! It just has to be! I told him, so he was killed! He got killed because he knew! I confessed it to him, so he got killed! She repeated the same thing as before, as though she were in a delirium. Despite me at my trying to console the crazed Xion, for some reason, the shadow at my feet began to freeze. From that shadow, a cold arm reached out. So cold it seemed like it would freeze even my heart just by touching me and grab my ankle. The heat generated by my body, the arm was absorbing it. It was a horrible chill. A freezing cold, numbingly frigid. It was an invulnerable chill of fear. Now, Ketchy better hope that that doesn't. It's unrelated, because then he might have put Rika in trouble, right? Is that what he might be freaking out about now? Though I sympathize with Xion, I had been naive in thinking it was something only she had to worry about. In my head, Xion's eerie words repeated again and again. He was killed because I told him. He was killed because he found out. I confessed everything. So he was killed. Those words echoed through my head like a monotone mantra. And finally, those, e those even repetitions took on meaning. The quiet shaking that had already overtaken me turned into a violent shiver that shot up my spine. Rika-chan! It's Rika-chan! What? What did you say just now? I... I, well... The truth is, I... I told her about it. I, I told Rika-chan. Today! Rika-chan? You mean Rika-chama? The one from the Furude Shrine? Yes, Rika-chan. I felt... I felt so scared and uneasy that I did it. I told Rika-chan. When you did, what did she say? The cat is worrying too much. I'll do something about it for sure. That's what Rika-chan said, and then she smiled. She smiled just like the missing mayor had when he encouraged Xion. Uh, I'm sorry, Xion. I, I'm a bit... I'm worried about Rika-chan. Uh, right. If you're that concerned, then don't worry about me. Please, go find out whether she's safe. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll call you again tomorrow at the same time. When I do, you'll know I'm still alright. Oh, that sounds dangerous. <laughs> the way that's framed makes it sound like he's not going to get a call. <laughs> uh, I got it. I'll be waiting. Okay, bye. Sorry. I'm hanging up. I put down the receiver without waiting for Xion to say goodbye. The danger to Xion and myself was secondary at this point. My sixth sense was blaring alarms in my head. I don't like this feeling. It's really bad. It's definitely, definitely bad. Damn it. 
Please be safe. Rika-chan! Rika-chan! Rika! Nothing can happen to Rika, please. Please. Nothing would happen happen to baby Rika. Nothing bad would happen to my second favorite character. It's impossible. <laughs> Scrapbook, page eight, or entry eight, whatever we're gonna call it. The three families in modern times. As previously described, the three families council today is a mere shell of democracy. In reality, it is a dictatorship run by the Sonozaki family. Both the Kimiyoshi and Furude families are far from their former glory. It doesn't seem at all like they're maintain they've maintained the ancient traditions. Only the Sonozaki family has retained their glory from the past and has inherited many colorful traditions from the age known as Onigafuchi Village. Even the most recent, verifiable example of Watanagashi that occurred at the end of the Meiji era seems to have done, uh, been done under the orders of the Sonozaki family. Refer to the three families' genealogical tree from the late Meiji. After the start of the Meiji era, the Son era, the Sonozaki family wanted to push the development of Hinamazawa Village, so they took a strong role in leadership. During the Dam Wars a few years ago, Kimiyoshi family served as the chair of the opposition alliance, but this was in name only. In actuality, the Sonozaki family reigned as leader behind the scenes. People whisper that perhaps the Kimiyoshi family dictated, uh, yeah, dictated acts of opposition that could be publicized, and the Sonozaki family enacted those which could not. Even in Hinamizawa, they whisper that the multitude of unsettling incidents reported during the dam protests, such as the kidnapping of the famous head of the Ministry of Construction's son, had been carried out by the Sonozakis. Additionally, they say that perhaps the Sonozaki family's secret maneuvering was responsible for the serial freak death incidents that have continuously occurred in recent years as well. The serial freak death incidents are without a doubt the second coming of the traditional Watanagashi. They must be enacting the Watanagashi on the day of the original Watanagashi, which has fallen to the level of an ordinary village hustle, in order to remind the villagers of the holy laws of Onigafuchi village. It's safe to assert that exploring the Sonozaki family is the fastest route for researching it today. If I, can, if I can expose the contents of the Fruit Shrine storehouse, I'd like to narrow my research target to the Sonozaki family next. The Sonozaki house is strictly guarded by security cameras on the premises, but thankfully, I become acquainted with the sisters Mion, the next heir, and Xion. I want this to be a breakthrough I can connect to my next line of research. Hmm. Hmm. These, these scrapbook pages remind me a lot of, like, in Kingdom Hearts, the, the like, the Ansem reports you would get. Slowly revealing more and more information from a different character's perspective about the what's happening. No, no. Don't worry about it. You see, when you order the Odin here... For some reason, it ends up on the annual invoice for our gas contracts. So don't be shy and have another drink. The man, red-faced, waved his hand to say that he'd had enough, disappeared into the brilliant neon lights in front of the station. <laughs> uh, Kumachan, you should be taking notes. The most modest people are the ones who live the longest. No. <laughs> Was all that true? Well, I don't know about that. Whether or not it's true, I think there's meaning in hearing something that sounds so plausible. Would something like that be a motive to go to, uh, to go for the mayor? Kumachan, here's what I always say. The motive only has to be enough for the person in question. You need to think about how different people value different things. Hey, bartender, 
Give me another mug. Though we have been suppressing the information, Tomotake and Takano's deaths were already known throughout Hinamazawa. All the rumors pointed to them having incurred the wrath of Oyashira-sama for setting foot in the Forbidden Temple, storehouse for ritual implements. According to the rumors, there were two other people who went in there with them. Shion Sonazaki and Kechi Maibara. People were whispering in the shadows that those two would be cursed by Oyashira-sama as well. Apparently, however, responsibility didn't fall solely on the four trespassers' shoulders. Until last year, it was locked up tight, but this year, it had been changed to a simpler lock. Hadn't that been, uh, hadn't that been what allowed these to enter so easily? Those are the rumors going around. Have you ever seen it, Kumachan? I remember well. I had to go there for something quite a while back. Sorry, I don't really remember. It was locked up so tight, it was scary. There were these real heavy bars holding it shut. It was sealed up as good as a bank vault. This year, it's a very simple and cheap padlock. The lone girl protecting the shrine, Rika Furude, disliked the heavy locks and consulted with the mayor, who had replaced it with a simpler padlock. So then, the mayor and Rika Furude share the crime. So, then after the mayor, wouldn't Rika Furude be in danger next? There's a decent possibility. Kumachan. I want you to contact all the cars we have in Hinamazawa. Tell them to stick near the Fruit Shrine. Got it! To the shrine. All right. Part of me was going to be like, already be like, hey, let's end the stream. But uh, I think I kind of want to keep going. But I will say, if I yawn a couple times, I apologize. As I mentioned earlier, it's been, uh, it's been a long day. End of chapter nine. There was like 12 chapters within the first chapter thing, right? Chapters within chapters, I think so. So if this has 12 chapters as well, then we're only... Three more away. All right. Uh, let's uh continue on. After hanging up on Xion, I searched for Rika Chan's phone number on my school's contact list. There it is. My fingers trembled with urgency, and I failed multiple times to put in the simple five-digit number. Keiji. Keiji. Are you calling someone at this hour? It's late, and it's, it's being rude to the other person. Uh, that doesn't matter right now. I shouted angrily at my mother, listening to the dial tone. Pick up, come on, pick up. The time was 11 p.m. It certainly wasn't early. It was essentially the middle of the night. Had Rika Chan already gone to bed? Her phone would be ringing constantly, though, so would she get back up for me? Rika Chan didn't pick up. She didn't pick up. She didn't pick up. Maybe she just happened to miss it. Maybe her bed was just too far away from the phone. The sound of a phone ringing gets clearer and clearer the longer you go on sleeping. Then... The bathroom? Yeah, she must be taking a bath. The bath! If that was the case, then even if she heard the phone, she wouldn't be able to pick up. It was a little late to be taking a bath, but it's possible she normally took baths right before going to bed. I'll wait 30 minutes, then try calling again. Even as I was thinking that, I called her house over and over again. 
I kept calling. Over and over. Again and again. Kept on calling her, but... She didn't pick up even once. I think I kept trying for about 30 minutes. Yet, she wasn't picking up. Damn, this guy... Ketchy and the phone. He's, uh... He's a struggler there. <laughs> he wants people to call him. He tries calling others. They're not picking up. He's talking to Oishi. Oishi and fucking... Uh... Rina is staring at him through his doorway. Uh... Okay. Anyway, I think I kept trying for about 30 minutes. Yet, she wasn't picking up. Were my phone calls so persistent that she had gotten scared of picking up the receiver? No. That couldn't possibly be it. There was no point in doing this any longer. The best thing to do would be to go there in person. Where was Rika Chen's house, though? Shit. Never even asked where she... Uh... I've never even asked her where she lived. Her residence was written there in the contact list, but it was an address with mostly numbers, so I couldn't tell where it was just by reading it. Isn't there a map or something in here? Rika Furude. Her last name was Furude. It was a bit of an odd last name, so it might be easy to find. <laughs> Thinking that, I rummaged through the drawer with the phone book, but could only find things like takeout menus and phone numbers for public establishments. Shit, shit, shit. I tore one thing after another out of the drawer, but I didn't come up with any clues as to where Rika Chan's house was. Calm down, Kitchen Mybra. If you don't know, then just ask. Ask someone who does know. So that. Ah, that's it. Rina's gotta know. I looked up Rina's phone number on the contact list. Rina Ryugu. There she was. Come on, Rina. Hello? This is Ryugu. It was a voice of a grumpy sounding man. I too would be a grumpy sounding man if you fucking called me at 11 p.m. at night, dude. I would probably sound like a grumpy man if you ever called me, honestly. Uh, <laughs> it must have been Rena's father. I am calling in the middle of the night. I need to be polite. Uh, I'm sorry for calling so late at night. This is Maibara. Is there any chance Rena's son is around? Rena's taking... Oh. Reina, Re, Reina, he says, well, yeah, he calls her the, the other, her, her actual name, right? Reina, Reina, Reina is taking a bath. Oh, she's done? Reina. Reina. There's a friend of yours on the phone. Oh, right. Reina Ryugu was her real name, wasn't it? I'd gotten so used to calling her Reina, then hearing her real name caught me a little off guard. Hello? This is Reina. Uh, uh, it's me, Kichi. Sorry for calling so late. Huh? Kichi kun? What do you need at a time like this? Like this? Well, actually, I wanted to know where Rika chan's house is. Reina seemed. A little appalled that I'd call her for something like this at this hour. However, she spoke her next word seriously, as if she caught on to how urgent my need was. Uh, okay. Sure. You know the assembly hall on the grounds of the Furude Shrine? There's a two-story shack used for storage behind it. That's where she lives. I couldn't immediately visualize the place, but as long as I knew she lived on the shrine grounds, I just have to take a look around. Got it. Thanks. Sorry again for calling so late. Apologies to your dad. Apologize to your dad for me too, would you? Okay, but Ketchikun. Why do you want to know where Rika Chan lives? Rina asked in an unusually sharp way, halting me before I could hang up the phone. I hesitated for a moment about whether to tell her. He was killed because I told him. Ketchikun? <laughs> Ketchikun? 
If you're still listening, could you answer me? Why are you asking where Rika-chan lives at a time like this? Alright, again, this comes down to inexperience on the fly of just lying or making up a story. Like, just imp one of two things. Keshi could either, either be like, uh, uh, it's a secret, uh, a secret for Rika, I need to get to her tonight. Or something simple like that. Or to do the always classic, you're breaking up, Runa. Runa, the phone's breaking up. Bye. And then just hang up. Doesn't even matter. What's she gonna do? Call you back? You'll be gone. Rena affected her. Did I read the last line? Kitchikun, you're still listening. Could you answer me? Rena affected. Okay, yeah. Rena affected her usual tone, but beneath her words lay a certain tension, like she'd intuitively sensed something was going on. What will you do, Kitchy? If it's Rena, can I tell her? He was killed because he found out. I revealed everything, so he was killed. Kitchikun? Kitchikun. Rena is being serious. Please answer me. Rena asked me once again in a tone so forceful I couldn't imagine her ever using it normally. I was taken aback by her vigor. Rena was Rika Chan's friend, too. She had the right to be concerned about Rika Chan disappearing. If I told Rena then, even if only for a moment, I could drive away my horrifying fears. Rena, well, I can't exactly tell you why, but. Yes? Rina's tone was serious itself was seriousness itself. Just from that tone, I could feel her saying, No matter what you say, Kitchikun, I'll believe you. That subtle sense excuse me, a security gave me the courage to reveal the truth. I have a feeling that Rika Chan is in danger. You mean like a premonition? Or do you have some reason to believe she's in danger? I really didn't have time to go back and forth with Rena about this. Still, I think listening to her calm voice soothed my pointless impatience. I don't have much reason, but... Yet, I still hesitated. I told Rika-chan that we had snuck into the ritual storehouse. The mayor, to whom Shion had confessed before that, had already disappeared. So, it's possible that Rika-chan also... I didn't know how to explain it to Rina. While I was tongue-tied, Rina spoke up. Sorry for asking something so weird. I thought about it, and it isn't like you need to be... And it isn't like you need to be sure. Oh. Rina I was like, that sentence was confusing me for a sec. Uh, Rina laughed a little, seeming a bit absent-minded. Wasn't exactly in the mood to laugh, so this time I was dumbfounded. Rena continued in a cheerful yet still purposeful voice. You're worried about a friend. I don't think you need a reason to go and check on them. Even if Rika Chan was asleep and you ended up waking her up. If that's why, if that was why you did it, then none of us would get mad. Rina, thank you. Okay then, Kechikun. Just one thing. You called Rika Chan's house, right? Then you just couldn't get through, so that's why you asked me here, or uh, asked me where her house is. Question mark. Yeah, that's right. I must have called her for over 10 minutes. She could just be sleeping and not have noticed. Rika-chan's house is really small. She would definitely hear the phone ringing, even if she was asleep. Satoko-chan is there too, so there's no way neither of them would notice. Huh? Satoko, you mean she's living with Rika-chan? Yeah. 
You didn't know? Well, we can talk about that later. Anyway, if you called that much and no one answered, then something's definitely wrong. Rina understood that the situation wasn't normal far faster than I could have ever imagined her to. It made her seem dependable. However, the fact that Rina acknowledged this also meant that the best case possibility of it all just being the result of my own needless fears went out the window. I'll go to Rika-chan's house right now. Will you come with me? I can show you the way. Sounds good. Let's meet up at the same place as usual. I'll be waiting for you. No, wait. I'll come get you at your house. You just wait there. And tell your family you're coming with me to Rika-chan's house, okay? Will that be okay? We might lose time if you come here. Did you call Mi-chan too? No, 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 no. She's really dependable at times like these. <laughs> no. If you haven't, then I'll give her a call. No, stop. Stop, Rina. My thoughts froze for a moment. Shiona just told me to be careful around Mion during our phone conversation a little while ago. If the Sunazaki main house was somehow lurking behind the surface of the annual freak deaths, then the current heir to the family, Mion, wouldn't be uninvolved. So, wouldn't that mean she wasn't uninvolved in what happened this year to Takano-san and Tomotake-san, and also the mayor's disappearance? Okay, bye! The fucking hell, did he not say... Keshi, for fuck's sake, honestly. He spaced out for like two seconds, and then she's like, Alright, I'm, I'm, I'm calling me on, bye! My guy. I'm like pissed. I'm pissed. I, I'm pissed at the situation for him. I'll be right over. Wait for me! That's all Rina said before hurriedly hanging up. Now wasn't the time to be doubting me on. I needed to make sure Rika Chan was safe. Oh god. I got changed and grabbed the key to my bike. I figured things would go more smoothly if we met up in the place we usually do before school. Rena wouldn't need to come all the way to my house. My parents would probably have objected if I told them I was leaving, so creeped out without a word. The night was unusually warm and disagreeably humid. She said that Rika Chen and Satoko lived together, right? Question mark, exclamation mark. Then it wasn't only Rika Chan. Satoko wasn't there either. Realizing what that uh realizing what them living together really meant caused my thoughts to immediately take a turn for the worse. I can't be. Satoko is she's got nothing to do with any of this. Even if there were a reason for Rika Chan to disappear, there shouldn't be one for Satoko. Catch you good! Rena was really fast. She, <laughs> lightning speed. She approached me on her bike at an amazing speed. Her breath was ragged, painting a clear picture of just how hurriedly she'd been going. Oh, Rena! Hey, Rena! Let's get going. Catch you good! Oh, she's serious. I thought I told you to wait to your house. Rena's expression was all business. Was she mad? came out of the blue, and I faltered for a moment. Well, I just figured it would be faster to meet up here. Oh my god, Ketchikun, don't you get it? Rina shouted, clearly angry. I've never seen Rina like this before. Do, do I get it? What's the problem? Rina seemed to notice she was scaring me, took a couple of deep breaths, then continued as if admonishing me, but her expression didn't soften at all. Keichi-kun. The whole village is in an uproar now that the elder disappeared, right? Uh. Yeah. Now you're telling me that Rika-chan and Satoko-chan aren't where they're supposed to be, right? 
Yeah. That about sums it up. Then you need to be more careful. Do you have any idea how dangerous it is to be standing out here alone in the middle of the night? I began to understand where Rina's anger was coming from. You told your family you'd be going to Rika Chen's house with me, didn't you? So that in the worst case scenario? If you and I were to disappear, people would know when and where we did. Rena was perfectly level headed in this emergency situation. Ever since the night of Wada Nagashi, every night someone had died or disappeared. On the night itself, Takna san and Tomotaka san met strange ends. On the next night, the elder vanished. Now, on the next night after that, Rika-chan and Satoko were nowhere to be found. I hadn't been thinking of anyone but myself, but it wasn't enough to say that Hinamazawa was a little weird at the moment. It was in fact extremely strange. Rina had even anticipated our own disappearances, and had, me t had, and had told me to tell my family where I was going. I was embarrassed at my own carelessness, and the need to be embarrassed made me afraid of the night. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't tell him yet. Okay. Now let's go tell them together. With Rina beside me, I wheeled back towards my house. Now go awkwardly tell your parents we're leaving. The moon seemed strangely high in the sky. A sky that was uselessly vast and cold. So that no matter what, it would never seem to me seem to me like a dream. This cruel fact had already confronted me. On such a crazy night, Rina had been unimaginably dependable. Hinamazawa's metamorphosis, enough to make Rina caution me against carelessness, was to me the most fearsome thing of all. The moon seemed strangely high in the sky. Oh! Ah, uh, we went. <laughs> oh! We met up with Mion on the way, and she, of course, was unsure whether to believe me about Rika Chen and Satoko, uh, Satoko's disappearance. Kei-chan, Kei are you serious? I'm going to get really mad if this is a joke. Mian was clearly displeased. If this were a joke, it wasn't very funny. I understood how indiscreet my words were. Ever since the day before yesterday, someone had either died or vanished every night. Rika Chen and Satoko disappearing after all that was something you just couldn't say, even in jest. Mi-chan. If it really is a joke, don't get mad. Smile. It'd be a joke after all. We need to go make sure whether it's a joke or not. You're right. Sorry for getting upset. However indiscreet a joke it may have been, if we learned that our friends were safe, it would end up as nothing more than a funny story. Having been warned about that by Rina, Mion gave a dry smile, tension she felt loosening a bit. She mounted her bicycle as well. Our three bicycles' lights flashed down the pitch black roads. They were some of the only illumination outside. Kei-chan, why did you suddenly decide to call and ask about Rika-chan's house at a time like this? Mion asked me the same thing that I've been that I had trouble explaining to Rina. Would it be weird to call it a premonition? I couldn't quite tell because it was dark, but I thought I could see Mion smiling very ambiguously. I definitely understood that she wasn't convinced, though, despite the darkness. Well, I had this bad dream while snoozing, and I couldn't get it out of my head. So, did Rika-chan get kidnapped in the dream? Well, hmm. It was more of a vague feeling, sort of, thing. Rika-chan got out of the phone, Rena and Mio would continue to talk to Rika-chan. 
If Rikuchen had answered the phone, I would have called you and Rina after that. While I smoothly babbled out of my mouth, makeshift through, though they were. I was lying because I thought telling them I was connected to Xion would be like silently admitting we'd stolen into the we'd stolen into the ritual storehouse together that night. Mion didn't press me any further. I don't know whether that convinced her. Or maybe she figured that making sure Rika Chan and Satoko were safe would be faster than making an issue out of it. I felt relieved, and immediately a little guilty. Mion hadn't really been acting any differently these last few days, but I'm still trying to distance myself from her for some reason. It was only because of what I heard from Shion and Oishi-san, that she was a successor to some kind of super extravagant gang family. No. Was I trying to force myself to forget? Don't do that, Kechimabra. Wasn't it... Wasn't it Mion who was the first to ask about the Knight of Watanagashi? In such a harsh tone at that. Have I already forgotten the terror I felt? At the time, Mion looked like... Someone different from the Mion I knew. When I think about that, Mion... Then Shion and Oishi-san's descriptions of Mion made a tiny bit more sense. That's it, isn't it? If it wasn't for how she acted that day, then I wouldn't be feeling this way towards her now. What on earth was going on with her back then? It's so... This isn't just such a small, minor detail, but, like, it's so crazy. Maybe not crazy is not the right word, but it's, it's an interesting tonal shift from, at the very start of this chapter... We're told from Mion, hey, Xion's like the fucking devil, alright? Xion fucking sucks. She sucks, she sucks, she's got a bad attitude, everyone should hate her, she sucks. And then, like, and then for a while there, Ketchy's like, oh, okay, yeah, my friend is Mion, I should trust her word about Xion, yada, yada, yada. And now we're starting to see it, like, completely reverse on itself because of them doing the uh, criminal act of getting breaking and entering into the storehouse that they should definitely should not have gone into against the wishes of many others he's got this bond now with Xion, whether he likes that fact or not um and now they're like you know a weird way of saying it but they're partners in crime <laughs> unintentionally and Xion and oishi like he just said was telling them hey Mion, you can't trust Mion." Mion's pretty shifty. The, the Sonazakis are kind of shifty. They hold a lot of power. They wield a lot of might in this in this village. And he's like starting to turn on uh, on his friend. Bad. Bad all around. Anyway, what on earth was going on with her back then? I was conveniently thinking only of everything she had done after that. While disregarding the very first thing, the thing I should have been looking at most, wasn't I? Mion was pedaling her bicycle in front of me, her long hair fluttering in the wind. No matter how long I looked at her back, it never gave me answers to any of my questions. We went all the way to the stone steps leading up to the shrine grounds. Of course, we weren't going to uh, want to haul our bikes up there, so we parked them beside the staircase instead. <laughs> So, this is the Fruity Shrine? Everybody comes and goes as they please, as if they were as if it were a park, but this place is actually a grand estate owned by the Fruity family. So the entire shrine is private property. It really makes you feel the passage of time. Ten or twenty years ago, it would have looked the exact same. Then, wouldn't that mean that the Fruite family is really old? With a history going back for generations? Yeah. They're gone. That's odd. Rena said something clearly disquieting, so I ran over to her. What's wrong, Rena? Rika-chan and Satoko-chan always leave their bicycles here. See? They're gone. I took a look around. Indeed, there are no other bicycles aside from the ones we'd taken to get here. Couldn't they have parked them somewhere else? Could they have brought them up the stairs? Those girls couldn't do that, Kechikun. Just as she said, 
I couldn't imagine Rika Chen and Satoko lugging their bikes all the way up there. We hadn't yet knocked on Rika Chen's door, but reality was already sparking some ideas that weren't what you'd call good. Maybe they were just parked under some trees and we hadn't noticed them. I refuse to believe that not being able to find their bikes here was proof that they disappeared. Let's go. The only way to be sure is to check their house. We all nodded and dashed up the stone steps. We passed through the red arch and came out onto the shrine grounds, which was covered in neat, gra uh, neat gravel. It was so quiet here, as though the Wajanagashi festival had never happened. So, where's the house they live in? Over here. Come with me. Rina took the lead and sprinted off. We went towards the assembly hall behind the shrine, then looped around behind it. In the darkness of the night, we found a small prefab two-story shack that looked like a warehouse. Oh man, I've... Akari... We're gonna see something bad tonight. <laughs> oh no. Uh, the lights are off. Are they sleeping? Let's knock. Rina and Mion neared the shack, which they didn't... Uh, which didn't really look like a place people would live. They had such a beautiful shrine, so I figured they'd live in an equally beautiful house. It was far from what I had expected. Rika-chan! Rika-chan! Satoko-chan! Satoko-chan! Are you there? Rina shouted up towards the second floor. Her voice was restrained at first, but steadily grew louder. No answer. In fact... There wasn't any sort of activity in the house at all. They might be sleeping. Let's wake them up. Mion banged on the shutter with both hands, and a loud sound echoed into our surroundings. They would have to notice they would have to notice this much noise. They would turn on the light in their room, fling open the windows, and yell, What time do you think it is? That, however, wasn't happening. There was absolutely no response. Mion stopped slamming her fist on the shutter, and a sudden silence fell over us. The silence aroused terrible thoughts in us. I could feel the blood draining from my face. It's locked. I wonder if we can get into, uh, get into somehow. Mion showed no signs of stopping. It didn't look like she would admit that they weren't there until we went inside and saw for ourselves. A refusal to give in gave me strength. The second story windows wouldn't be locked. I'll give him a try. Kichan, a ladder! Mian brought over a ladder that was standing against the house. The footing was a little unstable for me to cl be climbing it, but Mian held the ladder firmly in place for me. I hadn't climbed too many ladders. My inexperience with them exposed, I climbed up one step at a time, and tried to open each window on the second floor. Mi-chan, Mi I'm going to go check the main house just to be sure, okay? I'll be right back! Rina darted away. What, a main house? It's the Furude family's actual house. After our parents passed away, I think it's been left like that. Ah, right. Rika-chan's parents, they passed away, huh? At that point, I recalled something else. Wasn't Satoko living here too? Satoko's also an orphan. Her parents fell from a cliff because of Oyashiro-sama's curse. Then her older brother, Satoshi-kun, uh, Satoshi he disappeared. Satoshi, I've heard that name before. I remembered. He was the one who disappeared last year because of the curse. Ever since then, Satoko and Rika-chan have been living in the shack. 
Neither of them has any family, but at least they're together. They'll help each other out. Rina said main house, didn't she? Wouldn't it be easier to live there? The curtains were drawn, so couldn't get a good look inside to see, but... Two young girls living together seemed like a pretty tough life. I think she tried that at first. She said it was hard though because it reminded her of her parents. <sighs> I had no idea. I feel really bad for them. They were normally so cheerful at school that I never even realized an atom of this. Rika-chan and Satoko-chan, they have it hard, huh? She's cursed. Eh? Huh? Suddenly, Mion said something in such a low voice that it sounded like she was really cursing someone. I didn't let it slide. I turned around on the ladder to face her and asked again. Mion, Mion what did you just say? I said she's cursed. Mion, still holding onto the ladder, brought her head up to look me in the eyes. As soon as our eyes met, an absolute zero jolt of electricity surged through my body. Ah! <laughs> Not again! Mion's eyes clouded over, and within them boiled and bubbled a stew of chaos. They whirled around and around like a raging sea, and bubbles floated to the surface. Get the fuck get these eyes off my screen. Ah, I had at some point been trapped on this ladder, like being cornered on a dead end street. Mion, me on you. Why are you making that face? I intended to follow that up with, you're going too far with this joke, and give her a forced smile. However, on such uneven footing as I was, the only thing that came out of my mouth was a hoarse groan as I desperately struggled to not let nausea overwhelm me. Satoko Hojo? She's been cursed by Oyashiro sama. Mion answers with a response to something I never asked, as if replying to somebody else's question. The only people who fell from the park observation platform were her parents. Only her parents, who treated her like dirt, died that day. She was the only one to survive. Then she was sent to live with her aunt, who treated her cruelly, and the aunt was killed on the night of Watanagashi, Watanagashi by some deviant, who beat her to death till finally her brains were everywhere and her head and her head an entirely different shape by the end of it. Then Satoshi-kun, who always protected her. He suddenly disappeared on her birthday. Someone made him disappear, even though he wasn't abusing her. Police judged him to have run away from home, but Satoshi-kun uh, Satoshi wasn't the kind of person who would do that. He was always earnest. He would never ask for anyone else's help. He would always drag himself through everything with hard work alone. He worked so hard, he nearly ground his bones into dust, all for his one and only little sister. And yet someone made him disappear. She was the only thing he lived for, and yet someone made him disappear. Poor, poor Satoshi-kun. He was never rewarded, that Satoshi-kun. How ungrateful that child is. Oh my god, she is cursed. Was this just me or was there like a different like vocal quality on those last two lines? <laughs> <laughs> like they were coming from like a they were pulled from a different thing uh, all who get near her suffer the same fate the curse kills them or the curse makes them disappear she 
She cannot have any relief. She cannot have any relief. <laughs> oh, that's such a good line read there. It's probably Satoko's fault that Rika Chen disappeared too. Has to be, it has to be, it has to be, it has to have to be, it has 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 to be. Mian was mumbling words over and over that were no longer coherent. God damn it, Rina, why'd you have to invite <laughs> Mia? Her shoulders were trembling so hard that I could feel it through the ladder. I almost lost my footing, which made me realize just how far away the ground really was. C calm down, Mion. I don't know what you're talking about. I wasn't sure if she even heard me. Mion rocked back and forth, and that rocking and trembling was becoming even more violent. H help me! A ladder. It's falling. Help me! Help! Help me! Back at it again. Help me! Uh, just then, I heard the sound of many people running towards us. Oh, oh, hey! Uh, over here! I very nearly said help me outright. Four or five adults led by Rena ran over here with flashlights. Ketchikun, Mi-chan, sorry it took so long. I borrowed the key. Oh, nice one. Seems all the windows and doors are perfectly sealed. I was getting worried. When I turned, when I heard Mion talking like nothing had just happened, I again felt a chill run through me. The person currently holding the ladder in place it was definitely Mion. It was a real Mion Sonazaki. Then, the person muttering to themselves just a few seconds ago, who was that? person who was mumbling about terrible things, like curses. Who was that? I jumped down from the ladder as if running away before Mion turned into that person who wasn't Mion a second time. The adults tried a few different keys on a keyring as they tried to open the big shutter on the first floor. Rika-chan's house used to be a disaster shelter for the town council. So the key to the shutter is still kept in the mayor's house. It's Rika-chan and Satoko's private residence now, though. Well, this is on Rika-chan's property anyway. Nobody complains about it. Mion gave me a smile as she said that. I, however, could only return her gaze with an aghast expression. Mion was acting all too normal now, but that only contrasted all the more sharply with her earlier un mion like creepiness. Bang. Bam. Clatter, clatter, clatter. Bang! The shutter opened up for the first time in a very long while. Rena located the light switch and wasted no time going inside. I followed her in. Rika-chan! Rika-chan! Satoko-chan! If you're here, say something! We climbed a narrow staircase. It had looked like nothing more than a warehouse, but now that I was inside, I could feel how lived in it was. It was a person's home. Somehow, the scent of the two of them filled the place. This was definitely where Rika-chan and Satoko lived. The first floor doubled as a town assembly warehouse, but the second floor was a space entirely for living. It's like creepy dollhouse music. Just like a one-room apartment, past the kitchen was a living room taking up about 150 square feet. Dressers, cupboards, cupboard, cupboard, cup, cup boards, cupboards, and the like were packed into the space. And in the corner, there was a huge pile of clothes that appeared to have been taken in from drying outside. In the center of the living room was a fold-up table, and on it were small containers of things like soy sauce and salad dressing. A sense of a frugal lifestyle drifted from all of it drifted from all of it. It was strange that they weren't here in the middle of the night like this. The adults climbing the stairs one at a time began to make a fuss and talk amongst themselves. No. So? Not here? <laughs> yeah. They're not here. This is definitely weird. 
The villagers had just been thrown into chaos yesterday because of the mayor's disappearance. Then today, even Rika Chan and Satoko had. Were they out playing somewhere together? I can't be. Their bicycles aren't here, though. Where would they have gone so late at night? I guess those are different adult voices. Uh, have you just not come back yet? Have they just not come back yet? Where'd they go? The adults put forth various possibilities, and the house immediately devolved into a state of confusion. Eventually, Mion settled them down. I don't want to believe it, but the mayor, Kimiyoshi, disappeared yesterday. We can't say that this is unrelated. The adults' faces paled at Mion's declaration. Mai and Rena's did as well. Let's see. They could have gone nearby for some tea or something, then accidentally fallen asleep. Whoever invited them might not might just not be able to wake them up at all. Whoever invited them might just not be able to wake them up at all, too. Okay, right, right. Let's eliminate that possibility first. Makino-san, please go around to the houses near the stream. Katero-san, go look near Ojaga Lake. Akamura-san, you... Mian promptly gave directions to the villagers. The adults followed them without hesitation despite her age. We'll remain here and call up anyone who can think of, uh, we can think of on the phone. Okay, everyone, you have your orders. Got it. The adults all roared in reply and pounded down, uh, back down the stairs below. Wow, Mi-chan. You're not only chairperson of the school, but Hinamazawa too. No time for jokes. Hey, step aside. This old man is using the phone. Mion grinned proudly, took the receiver, got started. Rina gave Mion a trusting look, considering her dependable for doing all this. My feelings, though, were... A little more complicated since her leadership seemed to be affirming the Sonazaki family's successor impression that Shion and Oishi-san had given me. Stop right there, Kechimabara. None of that matters right now. The most important thing is to make sure Rika-chan and Satoko are safe. Let's see. Could there be a clue hinting at where they might have gone somewhere in this room? Where they might have gone somewhere in this room? Still, though... I wouldn't know what to look for anyway. If we tore the whole place apart and figured out what was different from before, we might be able to speculate, but... There was nothing strange about this room. There was no clues in sight. In the first place, I had never been here before. There was no way for me to know what was different if I didn't know how the room usually looked. Hey, don't give up, Ketchumabra. Stop thinking and start looking. For something. In search of something, I tried putting open the dresser, pulling open the dresser drawers, and opened the windows. I didn't uncover anything meaningful, though. Rena, also unable to stand around doing nothing, was looking around the room like I was. Rena! I don't think you'll be able to find. I don't think you'll find Rika chan by opening the refrigerator or the cabinet underneath the sink. <laughs> I just thought they might be hiding. Huh? Huh? Um... As we were searching out noise outside, villagers were quickly assembling here, having heard the commotion. Of course, a lot of them were probably people Mion had called. I'll go tell everyone what's going on. The police will be here sooner or later, too. We'll need to explain the situation to Oishi. Mian began descending the stairs, and we followed her out to the front of the house. Sure she loves that boy she has to get involved. Uh, there were already around ten adults there, and all of them looked uneasy. I suddenly noticed that the old people from the shrine were here as well, and they were uh, praying for Rika-chan's safety, rubbing their prayer beads. This had gotten bad. This wasn't just a problem between friends anymore. Mion-san! 
Rika Chan and Satoko Chan are not going to be found. Mio Chan, is it true that Rika Chan and Satoko Chan aren't anywhere to be found? The villagers all formed a ring around Mion, swarming her. Mion raised her right hand as if silently telling them to calm down. First, a check every house according to the town's council's uh, notification division and see if they're visiting anyone. After all, they could be fast asleep at someone's house and totally unaware that we're looking for them. It would definitely be hard for someone to wake up Rika-chan if she had eaten a good full meal and fallen asleep like a kitten afterwards. Oh, how nice it would be if that were the case. I don't want to think about this, but it's also possible something bad has happened. Mion's face grew remarkably more grim, and a wave of silence washed over the adults. We should divide up the work, too. We'll go around to all the places we went last night while looking for the mayor. We'll go look around the dam construction site as best we can. You guys go search around the school. Right. Let's get a move on. Come on, let's go. All of you were up all night looking for the mayor. I know you're all low on sleep, but please do your best. <laughs> got it! Got it, got it. With that as a signal, the adults scattered in every direction. I figured I should scatter somewhere as well, so start walking unsteadily in a direction no one else had gone in. I was getting farther and farther from people. I didn't feel scared or anything though. If someone were made to or made to disappear, Shion and I should be first. It would have been perfectly normal for me to have, uh, to be scared of the dark. However, I didn't feel that way. Why was that? It was because tonight, someone had already disappeared. So, nobody else would disappear tonight. It would take some time before I, exhausted as I was, would feel guilt at the cause of my own selfish sense of relief. Suddenly, my vision cleared, and a cold wind caressed my body. This was the hill from which you could see the whole village. Looking down from this hill, I could see lights on here and there, and knew that the entire village had awoken from its slumber. First, Takano-san and Tomotake-san, then the mayor, and now even Rika-chan and Satoko had been sacrificed, and word of it was spreading elsewhere. The strength in my knees left me. This could no longer be a joke. We could have we could have found them. Mion would have told me I was a worry wart. Rena would just be glad we did, and they would have smiled at me. My hopes disappeared as if I were awakening from a dream. That was what the view that was what the view I could see was telling me. Falling my knees, my arms went uh, both bent forward onto the ground, and I clawed at it with my nails. Couldn't figure out if I was feeling sorrow or frustration. <laughs> <sighs> Is this my fault? I couldn't endure the burden of my own sin, and I had just told Rika-chan about it. They had nothing to do with it, but Rika-chan and even Satoko had been sacrificed. It was like a cross that Shion and I would each have to bear the weight of until we ourselves were erased. Well, if I'm going that far, then the problem started long before that. My original sin, breaking taboo and entering the ritual storehouse without asking, I knew I shouldn't have gone in there from the start, yet I lost out to cheap curiosity. I hadn't felt so angry at myself until this very moment. There was a crunching sound. I wasn't even interested in who made the noise, despondent as I was. Keichikun? 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 Are you okay? It was Arena. Perhaps my clung at the ground made it look as though I was having stomach pains. She ran over and rubbed my back to make me feel better. I... This is all my fault. 
It's because of me. It's my fault. Keichi-kun's fault? You didn't do anything wrong. Please don't blame yourself for this. I could tell Rina was doing her best to choose the right words out of uh, consideration for me. That's why I could sense her intent being behind those words. Ketchikun, you know why Rikachan and Satoko-chan disappeared, don't you? Is what she really meant to say. Because it was an emergency, Rina ignored the reason why I wanted to make sure Rikachan was safe, but... Now that we'd actually confirmed her disappearance, it was only natural Rina would start to wonder about why. However, the situation having gone this far, I couldn't possibly tell her now. I didn't want to admit that Rikachan and Satoko had disappeared, but I couldn't let Rina disappear either. If you stay here, out here in the wind, you'll catch a cold. <laughs> Rina sat down, bringing her eyes level with mine. They told us that children should go back home to sleep. Rina showed me her watch as she said that. It was long past one in the morning. Time was passing too quickly. Had I been crawling around here for that long? If we don't sleep soon, we'll have trouble getting up for school tomorrow. Even the adults are really worn out since they were up searching for the mayor last night too. They were saying they'd break up a little earlier tonight. I was a little upset that they were allotting so mu as much time as this as they had to search for the mayor last night. But that was something I, and the cause of everything, had no right to criticize them for. It's alright. The police arrived a little while ago. Look, there's police cars coming into the village right now. Hearing that remark, I looked down at the village to see that there were indeed more cars than one would normally expect at this hour, coming from the darkness on the other side of the mountain. However, none of their emergency lights were on. Of course, their sirens weren't wailing either. That's right. All the incidents that occurred right after Wadnagashi were seen as a product... <coughs> Excuse me. Seen as a product of Oyashiro-sama's curse, and would be handled in secrecy. Rika-chan and Satoko too, their disappearance would end up exactly like the other serial incidents in the past. Surreptitious, unresolved, declared a mystery, and disappeared from memory. Rika Chen's face, her sweet face like a western doll's, would fade away. Satko's smile, her energetic, feigned smile, would fade away. The more I tried to remember them, the less I would be able to. I deserved to be called an idiot dozens of times over, and it wouldn't be enough. I couldn't hold back the tears of my own sheer stupidity. I don't know what you're blaming yourself for, Ketchikun, but you should stop. I wasn't about to deny it. I couldn't. Even so, couldn't affirm it either. I wanted to at least keep Rina out of this. If she found out, she would become involved. Please, Rina. Could you just leave me alone? Even if I went home, I wouldn't be able to sleep. If I couldn't get sleep, then I at least wanted to search for Rika-chan and Satoko until I collapsed. The entire village was looking, and yet they still hadn't been found. I don't think I'd be able to find them if I went looking alone at this point. Still, I had to do it. They disappeared because of me. <coughs> I couldn't possibly go to sleep while other people are out there searching. I'd said that to myself in self-deprecation, but I soon realized that Rena was silently trying to find the meaning in my mumblings. I realized I had misspoke. It's Kechikun's fault. Why do you think that? Why? I can't be. Ketchikun, you're not at fault. I was happy that Rina said these things to me, but 
She only did so because she didn't know the truth. If she knew that everything had been caused by my breaking taboo on the night of Wadanagashi, then even Rina would curse my existence. However, can't even allow for those curses. That would mean confessing my own crimes to Rina. If I spilled even one word of having snuck into the ritual storehouse on the night of Wadanagashi, then even Rina could disappear tomorrow night. The gentle, spirited, always joking, always howling. <laughs> but at a time like this, the most dependable person in the world, Rina might disappear. I didn't want that. I don't want that. Anything but that. This time, I need to bear my own cross. Alone. Kechikun, I know that you always have your friends in your heart. I can really understand feeling like you want to kick yourself. Rina knows, though, that it's not Kechikun's fault. You didn't do anything wrong, Ketchikun, and I know that. You, you know that? The shivering in my veins rushed up my back and replaced the sorrow in my heart with fear. I didn't... I didn't tell her anything, did I? Maybe I... I accidentally said something that caused Rena to figure it out? This is... This is bad. Now, Rena will disappear. Rena will disappear. Rena will disappear. Then, Rena, the same way I always did, grabbed my head and began to pet it roughly. Pet, pet. Ketchikun. Are you thinking that Rena might disappear now, too? Because of Oyashiro-sama's curse? She puts more force into the hand rubbing my head. You don't need to worry about that. Rina isn't going anywhere. Oh, I, I freaked out because I started... I think I should hear rain outside. I was like, I thought that was in-game though. And I was like, why does it sound like rain? I think it's outside. Alright, we're fine. Uh, you don't need to worry about that. Rina isn't going anywhere, I promise. Why? How can you say that with such confidence? I mean, someone's been sacrificed every night so far. There's no proof that it wouldn't happen again tomorrow night. There's even less proof, after all, that the sacrifice wouldn't be Rena. I don't care who you are. Just, please, if you're going to erase someone, erase me first. Please, stop cruelly getting rid of people who are close to, like the mayor for Shion, and Rika-chan and Satoko for me. Shion's hysterical shouting came back to mind. They must be planning to kill us at last of all. They're not killing the first people who come to mind. They start by killing those we're close to. And then after they've caused us so much pain, they'll kill us. It must be what they're doing. <laughs> Reina. R Reina. Please, don't disappear. Please don't. As long as I'm still here. I can no longer conceal the sobs welling up within me. Come on, Ketchikun. Crying doesn't suit you. Let's go back to the others. The housewives are cooking some miso soup for us. It'll warm you up and calm you down. Rina prompted me to stand. I didn't have the energy to oppose her, so instead she urged me to. We returned to the shrine grounds to find several gas stoves there with miso soup in big pots. The many villagers were uh, there sipped at the soup they were given in dead, stony silence. Their expressions were absolutely exhausted. Everyone had just been running around the village until a little while ago. From the dreary looks on their faces, though, I assume they hadn't come up with anything else, uh, with anything yet. Kei-chan, where'd you go? I was worried you'd disappear too. Sma. Sorry. Mion held out some miso soup for me, but I refused the offer. Didn't have much of an appetite. Mi-chan. Mi-chan. How is it? Did you find any clues? Mion took a sip of her bowl, her expression frank. None at all. 
学校が終わってから家に帰って。School ended and they went home. 二人で自転車に乗ってどこかに行ったらしい。Then, two of them went somewhere on their bicycles. しかも、二人が自転車に乗った姿は全く目撃されていないし。Moreover, nobody ever saw them riding their bikes, so. When it gets dark out in Hinamazawa, people quickly vanish from the streets. Aside from adults hurrying back, from,、uh, back home from town in cars or on bicycles, it was normal to see absolutely nobody walking around outside. It wasn't at all strange that nobody had seen Rika Chan and Satoko riding their bikes. It was the same last night with the mayor. There's no hope. Mion's apathetic tone pricked, pricked my nerves. But anger quickly subsided. She had been doing all sorts of things to try and find Rika Chan until just a second ago. If I asked her, she'd probably say she was up all night last night too, looking for the mayor, wouldn't she? She must have been far more fatigued than I was. Besides, what about me? I had spent the time hunched over in indecision, all alone. I had no right to say anything about Mion. Kei chan, I know it's hard, but. I know it's hard, but let's turn in for the night. We just decided we should break up the search for now. Drink this, let's call it quits.、Uh, is this the end? Oh, no, of course not. Once it's bright out again, we'll do a thorough search with the police's help. They could have gone to Okinomiya too. People are even saying we should go through all of Shishibone City investigating whether there are any witnesses for both the girls and the mayor. それよりもケイちゃんだよ。Anyway, what happened, Kei Chan? どこに行ってたんだい ？Where'd you go off to? いつの間にかいなくなっちゃうから。You vanished all of a sudden. I was really worried. Suddenly, I was on the receiving end, but I didn't have the willpower to respond. Sma, keep it up. Sorry, I'll be more careful. Nothing happened? There wasn't anyone suspicious spying on or stalking you? Nothing like that? Mian demanded with a serious expression. I was being criticized for how inconsiderate I had been. Despite being in so much pain, I was frustrated that I was being criticized, but it was my sin. My sin, and I must bear it alone. Nothing. I'll be careful either way. Sorry. Mian, now aware that nothing had happened, heaved a big sigh with her shoulders looking relieved. Oh, my, my, my. I knew I saw something good coming from over here. I'd be much obliged if you allowed me to have some. We heard the repulsive voice of a fat man. <laughs> Jesus. We heard the repulsive voice of a fat man. It was Oishi san, trailed by a handful of police officers. He was acting energetically in a way unfitting given the situation. There's not much left. But you can have some if you want it. Mion didn't like Oishi san very much. <laughs> Her cold white attitude, though, didn't seem to bother Oishi san in the slightest. It was like splashing water in a frog's face. <laughs> What a way of putting it. Well, now. Miso soup leftovers have a bit too much salt for my taste. <laughs> Confound it. No. <laughs> Would you all like any? He recommended it to his subordinates, but everyone gave dry smiles and refused. How do you do? So, have the police gotten hold of any clues? Rina's smile was warm enough to replace the miso soup. Don't you worry, little missy. 
Everything's fine. We're searching for them real good. <laughs> he didn't say a word about having found any new clues. In other words, there had been no progress. That sure was an annoying way of beating around the bush. In any case, it really has gotten late. All you youngsters should get on home and get some sleep. It'll be bad for your health otherwise. Yeah. Kei-chan, Rena, get some sleep. These guys get our tax money. They'll hand it from here for us. We're taxpayers too, you know. Hmm. <laughs> I feel like a soba noodle chef eating my own soba. No. <laughs> I really was in the mood for laughter. In fact, Oishi-san was the only one laughing like an idiot. <laughs> okay, seriously, please do your best. Let's go home, Kechikun. It'll be hard to wake up tomorrow if we don't. Yes, that's right. I can always bring you home if you need. Kuma-chan, why don't you bring the car around? Uh, no thanks. We came on our bicycle, so... No need to worry. We came in a truck. We'll just throw the bikes in the back. We may have gotten pretty sleepy, but we just need to ride home at this point. I didn't want to bother the police like that. Rina, however, nodded. Okay, if you insist, we'd appreciate it. It's probably safer than if we went back alone. When I thought about it carefully, I realized that Rina's idea was extremely rational. Now that it's decided, let's get a move on, shall we? Okay, bye. Good night. Rina, Kei-chan. Yeah. Mi-chan, you go to bed soon too, okay? Good night. I waved my hand as well, saying goodbye. Rika-chan and Satoko still hadn't been found. My unease, however, was steadily being pushed away by sleepiness. Rina showed the police where our bicycles were so that Oishi-san could haul them in up into their truck. He prompted us to get into the back seat. I could hear the spring squeaking as I sat down onto a seat that would normally hurt my rear end, but at this point it was very soft. It was more than comfortable enough for me to fall asleep on. Ladies first. We'll start with the little miss's house. Where do you live? Thank you. My house is, well... Here's hoping that my power doesn't go out while it's raining. Always susceptible to the power going out. So if, if the stream just kicks out for whatever fucking reason, know that I'm aware and it might be <laughs> uh, power going out. Uh, let's hope that doesn't happen though. Rena's voice slowly grew distant. I felt myself being sucked into the void of sleep. Hello? My brother's on. <laughs> My Brasan, are you asleep back there? Oh, he fell asleep in the back of the car. That's embarrassing. Hmm? When I came to, it was quiet. The car was parked. I wish his son was giving me uh, light slaps to the cheek. Didn't feel good at all, so I woke up immediately. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, mm, I'm sorry, I just fell asleep. Something was being held right under my nose. A clump of metal? 
It was a can of coffee. It's lukewarm by now. But cafe a lot is good, even at room temperature. Oh, thanks. I mechanically took the can and opened the pole top. The feeling of the warm, sweet liquid going down my throat awakened my sleepy mind. When my drowsiness receded, I started wanting to know why the car was stopped and why I was offered coffee. Oasis-san, who had been in the driver's seat, had at some point moved to the back. <laughs> Suddenly, I had a very bad feeling about this. It reminded me of the questioning yesterday at the library. It was already too late by the time I realized I'd made a mistake. Today, of all days, it didn't look like I'd be getting away. I had a feeling that until Oishisan heard what he wanted to, he wouldn't be letting me go. <laughs> Please, don't get all formal on me. I'm not going to eat you or anything. My son. Oishisan gulped down the last of his coffee, then stretched wide, showing me how relaxed he was. That, however, only served to heighten my nervousness. What? What do you need from me? Yo. Need? Oh, no, nothing, really. Or you're going to evade the question at this point? What a deeply unreadable man. Well... I don't need you for anything. I just thought that you might need something from me, my son. I don't... I don't need anything. Oh, I see. Really? Are you sure there's nothing? <laughs> there's only one side door in the back seat of his truck. In other words, my only exit was blocked off by Oishi san. This is weird. This is. <laughs> I, I know it's not, like, supposed to. I mean, it's supposed to be uneasy from the point of view of Ketchy during this whole thing. But there's, like, a second, like, second layer of uneasiness I'm feeling about, like, just the way it's being described of, like, like oh, I'm in the back of a cop car. He's blocking my exit. He's going to question me and ask me things I don't want to be asked about. He's not going to let me leave. Like, it's kind of. There's like a weird angle to this that, I, that I'm, I'm uncomfortable. Even if the game is not trying to bend me in that direction, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, just with the language constantly being like, I can't get away. He's blocking my exit. He's stretching out. He's relaxed and comfortable. He's asking me if I need anything. He's offering me a drink. Ugh, I'm kind of like, uh, I don't know. Oishi, <laughs> please. Let him go. <laughs> uh, I couldn't get away. I could only limply hang my head and maintain my silence. Oishi-san, despite my reticence, relaxed and began smoking a cigarette. The cries of the insects outside seemed to be growing longer and longer, to an amount of time that almost seemed infinite. Here I was sure that you had something you wanted to talk to me about. I wish son exhaled a puff of smoke. Exhaled. Uh, the windows were open, but the tobacco smoke still accumulated inside the vehicle. How much did Oishi san know? What did he know, and what did he want to hear from me? If finding out the truth made you disappear, then if I told him, would Oishi san disappear too? I had a feeling that I didn't need to worry about that in his case. I wonder how all this ended up happening. Oishi-san addressed me in a low tone as if it was he was talking to himself. How all this ended up happening? How the hell should I know? That was what I wanted to know. You know Jiro Tomotake-san and Mio Takano-san, right? I know you do, because I personally witnessed you with them during the festival, along with Shion Sonazaki-san. <laughs> do you know how Tomotake-san and Takano-san are doing now? 
実はお亡くなりになってましてね。They've actually, well, passed away. 気の毒な死に方でした。They met very untimely deaths. I wish some probably played that card in order to surprise me. However, I already knew. It didn't display the extreme reaction he expected. What's this? Hmm. Did you already know? Unfortunately, for this question in particular, remaining silent was equivalent to saying yes. Oh, so then did you also know? The reason Tomotake san and Takano san were cursed like that? People are saying that apparently they went into some forbidden building. Storehouse for ritual implements. A forbidden shed sealing away Hinamazawa's blood stained past. Where the mistake that started all happened. Do you know about the rumors? I'd say the mayor and Rika Furude san were cursed because of that, too. That would mean it was mine and Shion's fault. He was right. As soon as we revealed what we did. What did they call it? A ritual storehouse? They're saying it was bad luck. The lock to it had been replaced by a simpler one, which. Made it easier for thieves to get inside. What? This was news to me. Until last year, apparently had these big bars and huge padlock on it. I mean, you know. Ever since the priest and his wife passed away, Rika Furuta san has been managing the place, right? Apparently, she talked to the mayor, saying she wanted them replaced with a lighter, more simpler padlock because the bars were too heavy for her. I didn't know anything about those big bars she was talking about, but the lock had certainly been a simpler one. It was a pretty cheap one, too, and didn't really fit my impression of what a lock for a place you'd store something as important as ritual implements would look like. Rika-san is a small girl, after all. The bars are heavy with rust, and they must have uh, caused her a lot of trouble. So the mayor hired a craftsman and replaced the lock with a simple padlock, so she could open it with a key. So, how does that mean it was a bad lock? Here's what I'm saying. Thieves couldn't get in with the old tight lock. The mayor and Rika san replaced it with a cheap lock and the key on their own, so thieves broke into it. Apparently, that's how it's going down. That explanation's a bit. Letting that slide, certain members of the village delivered punishment upon the thieves who stole into the ritual uh, storehouse, as well as the mayor and Rika-san, who changed the lock. At least, those are the whispers that seem to be going around. Maibara-san. Maibara-san. What do you think? What do I think? I don't really know what you mean by certain members of the village. Are you familiar with the three families? Yeah, 
Representatives from each of them gave short addresses at the Watanagashi Festival's opening ceremony. Did you see them? I came partway through the festival, so I don't really... The three families are the three oldest families in Hinamizawa. To give actual names, the Kimiyoshi family, Sonozaki family, and the Furude family. They each have quite the lineage, it seems. Long ago, it said that everything in the village was decided by a council of the three families. The Kimiyoshi family, old man Kimiyoshi, meaning the mayor's family. The Sinazaki family was Mion's. So the Furude family was Rika-chan's family then. After the war, Sonozaki family quickly expanded their influence. Practically speaking, after leading the fight against construction during the dam conflict, they jumped to the top of the hierarchy in Hinamizawa. You see, though, in accordance with the old ways, they still decide important village matters only after consulting with the three families. That's why the leaders of the three families each have their own address at the start of Wadanagashi. In other words, the mayor, the old lady currently in charge of the Sonozaki family, and the last remaining member of the Fruite family, Rika-san. I heard that the Sonozaki family was pretty high up there, so Rika-chan's family was just as old. Well, as you're aware, she has no relatives at all. In reality, the Furude family holds pretty much no influence. However, it seems like people gravitate towards Rika-san on a personal level, and I hear that many of the village's elderly have blind faith in her. It was certainly true that Rika-chan had an odd sort of charisma amongst the elderly. So, what are you telling me about all this three family stuff for? I wish some pause for emphasis, lighting another cigarette. I've explained a lot, but I suppose it's still not enough. He's not going to say something along the lines of like, he thinks the Sonozaki family, and by extension of that, Neon, intentionally tried to get rid of, like, members of the other two family. Is he? I've explained a lot, but I suppose it's still not enough. I'm asking because I don't understand. Or she gave me a dry, meaningful grin and blew out another big puff of smoke. Members of the three families are disappearing one after the other. That's what I'm talking about. I've read that it's based on some kind of old traditions inherent in Hinamizawa, but I don't know how much beyond that. I don't know about... I don't know anything about it either. That's why I'm asking. The leaders of the Kimiyoshi and Furude families have disappeared, so maybe the leader of the Sonozaki family will disappear next. Ah, oh, no, he's saying... Okay. <laughs> Well, 
Well, that's just a random idea bouncing around in my head at the moment. <laughs> just kidding. Really? I mean, I know I've semi-joked about how weird Oishi is and his his way of how he involves like these kids in the or I say kids catchy into this whole thing as we've seen in chapter one and chapter two here now. Um, and I know right there at that end of the line he's saying, "Huh, just kidding, really." But that's such a weird thing to say. Like, oh man, we've now we know, uh, like we've seen. Everyone knows Tomotake and Takano dead <laughs> in a gruesome manner. Uh, Kechi's friends, close friends, that Oishi knows is close friends with, Satoko and Rika, disappeared. And then he's like, <laughs> what a funny joke. Man, wouldn't, your other, wouldn't it be funny if your other friend disappeared all of a sudden? It's like, it's just, ew. Oishi, what 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 is his deal? Why is he like this? <sighs> Whatever. The leader of the Sonozaki family. Who is it? Toshi wa Sonozaki Honke no oba chan nan desu ga jishitsu jou no Toshi kengen wa mou mago musume no Mion san ni ikou shite iru to mite machigai nai de shou ne. Current leader is the old lady at their main house, but it wouldn't be incorrect to say that practically all the rights of leadership have been transferred to her granddaughter, Mian-san. The visage of Mian giving prompt directions to the adults while searching for Rika-chan sprung back to mind. Mion! Mion! She's gonna disappear? I hadn't even thought of that possibility. All my hair stood on end. That's insane. Yeah, the show. Nobody wants that, right? Uh, of course not. We can't allow that. Clamp. Oishi san grabbed my shoulders with both hands. Then help us, my brother-san. Uh, dirty, you dirty, dirty old man. If there's anything you notice about Mion Sonozaki lately, please tell me. I was going along with him. By the time I realized it, it was too late. I wish someone brought his face in closer, almost close enough to ram into me, waiting for my next words. This pressure. I can't tear my eyes away from his. That moment, I heard a beeping sound. It was from the driver's seat. He ignored it at first, but then it started to bother him, so he finally let go of me and leaned into the driver's seat. Mush mush. Hello? Hi, hi, Kandoryoko. Yep, loud and clear. I was saved. Of course, it's not like I could use this opening to escape. So this I see. Hi hi. Yes. Alright. Yeah, mother Let's head back then. Hi hi. Yes. Hi hi. Okay, okay. Apparently he was being recalled. Now that I knew I'd be freed, tension in my body dissipated all at once. It looks like I need to get going. Hmm. Hmm, we were just getting to the good part, too. It's too bad. I wish some flung open the door, exited, I walked around the front, uh, walked around the front to the driver's seat. He left the door open. Did that mean I could leave? You really care about your friends, my brother An admiral trait for a kid to have in this day and age. Totally understand that it feels like you'd be betraying them if you told the police anything. It's the middle of the night, so get a good night's sleep and then think about it. I don't think he's going to be sleeping. I'm just going to place a guess. <laughs> Just a little bit of courage from you might end up being what saves many of your friends in the end. Do you want to say that sacrifice wouldn't stop with Rikuchan Satoko? You know this already, but every night since Watanagashi, something has happened. 
In the past, the curse only occurred once per year, but this time it's been going on for uh, for days. What a prosperous year this has been. I don't think you can call that prosperous. The night before last, last night, and now today. There's no proof that something won't happen tomorrow night as well. It's our job to prevent such things before they happen, but for that, we need your cooperation, my Birkin, or my Birkin. I looked out and open. Uh, I looked out the open door to see none other than my own house right in front of me. Creeped me out that he knew my name and address, but I was too sleepy right now. I was too sleepy to care. Well. You're probably tired. It's already three in the morning. Please, get yourself a good rest. Yes, sir. I'll be going now. When I was about to get out of the truck, as if to deliver a parting blow, Oishi-san said in a raised voice. I'll be coming. <coughs> I'll be coming by every day until you feel like talking, alright? What a threat. I don't believe forcing you to confess in an interrogation room is really in fashion these days. Couldn't say anything in response, but me slamming the door shut probably served the same purpose. After lightly beeping the horn, Oishi-san's truck drove off. Don't beep at me. I went to the front door without waving goodbye. The door was locked, but the chain wasn't up. I unlocked the door and entered, then walked over to the staircase. That was where I lost consciousness. <sighs> Damn, just utterly exhausted, just passes out on the stairs. Understandable, understandable for a guy. Oh my goodness. Four tips. Let's knock these out. Couple scrapbooks. Alright. The Sonazaki family. The one to drastically expand its influence after the war was the Sonazaki family. The leader at the time was Oryu Sonazaki, who still has the seat today. Or you, Senozaki has grown old, and today you can only catch a glimpse of who she was at the time. From what I've been told, however, she was a leader extolled as the best in history. Having become so old, aside from going out a few times a week for lessons, she spends her time at home in solitude and seems to have leave most of the ceremonial affairs to her heir, Mion. There are different views on why the successor was not her daughter, but her granddaughter, Mion. Uh, but it's rumored that it has to do with disownment of her daughter and son-in-law. That uninhibited granddaughter, Mion Sonazaki, still shows no signs of the dignity required of the next leader. However, she does have Sonazaki blood in her veins, and is permitted the name of Demon. She still doubtlessly requires caution, and is probably hiding her fangs and claws as skillfully as the leaders of the past did. はい。郵便局員も目撃してないそうです。その先本家は郵便受けに犯行が吊るしてあるそうで、書き留めも宅配便も勝手に犯行をして投函していいことになってるんだそうです。Yes, the postal worker hasn't seen anything either. Sonosaki Main House has their seal hanging from their mailbox so that anyone can stamp their mail or parcels with it and drop it in. <笑>そりゃ不用心ですね。ってことは <laughs> That's rather careless of them. So when was she last seen? Watanagashi no kaikai shiki deshita aisatsu ga saigo desu. 
その後すぐに帰宅したらしいですから。She was last seen at the Wad Nagashi opening, cer-、uh, opening ceremony greetings. She apparently returned home right after that. これですからね。話じゃ、週に何回かお稽古ごとで外出してるそうじゃないですか。Well, she is pretty old. When I've heard she goes out a few times a week to take lessons, right? そっちはどうです Have you found anything out about that? 毎週月曜に集会所で大正ごとを習ってるんですが、今週は休んだそうです。Every Monday she goes to the assembly hall to practice the Taisho Goto, but she didn't go this week. 欠席の電話とかはそれを誰かが確認したとかは ?Any calls say she wasn't going to be there? Has anyone confirmed it? いえ、誰も。ただ、たまに休むことがあったらしいので、誰も不審には思わなかったようです。No. Nobody. She apparently takes days off once in a while, though, so no one thought it was strange. Ashita, sir, Juji Kura in Natara, she actually finished a den was to me, Mashokane. Zaita go Kakuni to me, take the say. Tomorrow, why don't we pretend we're in the town hall and call around ten o'clock? Please figure out whether she's at home. Juji, this ne? Yo, I said. Ten o'clock. Got it. Ever since it started to seem more and more like ancient Hinamazawa tradition has something to do with all this, he'd been keeping a careful eye on the three families. At this point, the leader of the Kimyoshi family and the leader of the Furude family had disappeared. There was only one leader left. Oryu Sonozaki, the leader of the Sonozaki family. She was apparently a pretty old woman. Her dignity wasn't waned, but she still only appeared before people rarely, so it was difficult to confirm where she was at any given time. She, the last leader, had been seen since the day of Watanagashi. Was she still alive and well within the Sonozaki main house? Or had she? Sonozaki Miyonga Yuniwa. According to Mion Sonozaki, she had fallen ill and was sleeping it off. I wonder if she's really sleeping. I'd like to take a look at her face and her pulse. You could say that again. Two of them breathed out a big puff of cigarette smoke. Oi, son. Sonozaki Honke to Hurde Jinja no Sosa Rejo. Shinse. Oh, Ishi san, about the search warrants for the Sonozaki main house and the Furuti shrine. Do you think we'll get them? Oh, Ishi didn't respond. Exhaled another cloud of tobacco smoke. His surroundings now as foggy as his mind. <laughs> hmm. I wonder what that denied request is. <laughs> the Hidden Demon. The inhabitants of Hinamazawa believe that the blood of demons flows in their blood. As such, the character for demon, that, is treated as very sacred. For example, usage of the character, that, in names, is apparently a right reserved for only leaders of the Kimiyoshi and Sonozaki families. Case in point, we can say,、uh, we can see it in the current Sonozaki family leader's name, Oryu, is written with the character, that. This, and only this, is proof that she is a legitimate leader of the Sonozaki family. In the same way, Mion Sonozaki, its successor, contains that in her name, with Mi being written as that. It also goes for Uru's daughter and Mion's mother, Kane, who did not succeed her. It's known that before the disowning, Kane's name was actually written as that, though it was changed afterwards to that, still read as a Kane. Incidentally, it's thought that the first character of the mayor、uh, Kichiro's name that originally meant demon, which can also be read as Ki. It should be said that names、uh, using the character aren't limited only to successors of the Sonosaki family. You can even find in the last names of the three families. For example, the characters for Kimiyoshi are likely a split up version of that. If you write in reverse and top to bottom as that, it clearly resembles the character that. As for the Furude family, who have been in the Shinto priesthood for generations, the word for fortune teller can be written without interval characters as that. Me just getting to say that, that, that for a bunch of characters.、Uh, I think that with the addition of a demon's horn, the tick on the top of the character, the that becomes the that that is used in their name now. In the case of the Sonozaki family, where Sonozaki is written like that, I can't find any reference to the character that, perhaps because it's already ingrained into their first names. They were the clan responsible for running the Watanagashi ceremony, so 
I think that instead they included the contents of that ceremony into the last name. The Zaki in Sonozaki is a conjugation of the word for slice, and the Sono, sono written as that, probably contains the hidden, hidden meaning of the human body as it is a complicated mess, organs enclosed by four sides. I think, in other words, that Sonozaki comes from those who slice open the gut. Hmm. We've kind of heard that phrase being used before. <laughs> Alright, one last one here. Before we pack it up. Request denied. I'm back! How did it go? Did you find any clues? The officers shook their heads in disappointment. Exhaustion was plainly showing on everyone's faces. That was only natural. None of them had gotten a wink of sleep since the day of Watanagashi. Chief, let the youngest of us take a nap and then switch them out. We've got a long stretch ahead of us, after all. Uh, let's not push ourselves too hard. Rest up so we can take it easy as we go. I've been telling them to sleep in shifts. Nobody actually seems willing to sleep, though. Could you tell them yourself, Oishi-san? Oh my. Oh my. Uh, you don't need to force yourselves. Please let everyone sleep in shifts, starting with the youngest. Uh, Komiyama-san, please do that. After the chief told him as well, Komiyama-san uh, left his seat. So, chief, still no good on our request? It's just a rumor among the villagers in the first place, you know? It's going to be difficult without more concrete evidence. Even when that evidence might be tucked away in there? Come on, Oishi, you know it can't it doesn't work like that. Uh we need evidence that evidence is tucked away in there. Chief, don't start speaking in riddles to me now. We have witnesses that say four people, including the two who died, went into the Forbidden Ritual Storehouse without permission. This is all reliable information. You might call it information, but they're really only rumors. They're not concrete evidence. Well, it's true that we don't have pictures, or any pictures, of four of them sneaking in with cloth tied around their heads. Anyway, those four saw something inside the storehouse. Something important enough that they'd be erased. Important enough that they'd be erased? What would that be exactly? That's why I'm asking for a warrant to go looking for in the first place. Anything pointing out the Sonozaki family's connections to violent organizations would be a major contender. Uh, like a pile of Tokarev or Tokarevs or a secret poppy production facility. The secret Sonozaki family fortune would also be pretty difficult to discard. Look, Oishi-san, I know how you feel. However, 
A storehouse is a sacred building belonging to the Frude Shrine. We need to have proper consideration for the locals in dealing with it. I heard that there was an hour-long call made from Congressman Sonazaki to the big man. Chief, could he have nailed you back down? Anyway. Excuse me. Ah, uh, as long as you don't have suitable evidence, we won't get a search warrant for the storehouse. That goes for the Sonazaki main house, too. Especially considering that the that's the jurisdiction of both Section 4 and the Prefectural Police's Crime Prevention Division. We need careful preparations first. If you say you need preparations, then why don't you just let me talk with them directly? Shigechan is the head of Section 4, right? For crime prevention, it's Sankai-san. They seem like they'd be quicker to talk if I sat them down at a mahjong table. Chief, you have a visitor. Uh, yikes! Pushing the employee who guided him in right of the way, right out of the way, was an old man who looked like a yakuza member, given his crested kimono and hakama. hakama. Did he not get enough of this over the phone? <laughs> I am Congressman Sonazaki. I demand to know who's responsible for this. This inside. Uh, hello, I am the division chief, uh, Takasugi. I don't need your name, I could have demoted on, I could have you de- Let me try that again. I don't need your name, I could have you demoted on a whim. You wouldn't even be enough. <laughs> Bring out the one called Oishi or whatever. He deserves punishment for requesting a search warrant for the sacred Furda Shrine. あ、申し訳ございません。あ、大石はただいま捜査に出ておりまして、なかなか連絡がつきにくく、私が変わって受けたまわりますので。Uh, I sincerely apologize. Oishi is currently out of investigation and he's been difficult to contact. I'll take his place and hear you out. So please, have a seat. The chief's eyes were telling me to get out of here. Perhaps I'll gratefully accept this favor. Maybe I'll go lay down in the nap room. Listen here. The Furude Shrine spent 2600 years under the Imperial calendar and 2,500 more beyond that. It is sacred, a sanctuary that must never be defiled. Getting a history lesson. The 800,000 gods, Oyashira-sama, and the spirits of our ancestors are enshrined there. Holy Shrine protects Hinamazawa from when the sun comes up to when it sets, and from when the moon rises to when it falls. Who is the idiot who wanted to set foot in there? そもそも信仰の自由は憲法で定められた国民の最も尊い権利であろうがそれを自らの捜査の対慢を口実に怪我そうという困難 Besides, the right to religion is the most revered right of the people of this country in this constitution. You dare to be so bold as to solely that using your own investigation's negligence as pretext. I cannot. I will not allow it. Are you listening, you lying scum? I'm angry now, so you're not getting off the hook that easily. 
Something tells me the Sonazaki representative, and by extension the family, uh, does not want them investigating. Good shit. Good shit. What is that? End of chapter 10. Bam. Decent progress for a Tuesday night stream, I would say. Uh, I am sleepy as shit. I am tired. Like I keep saying, it's been a long Tuesday. But thanks so much for sticking through. Just by me yawning a couple times there, especially at the end there. Uh, thanks so much for watching. As always, hope you enjoyed. Uh, back with more Higurashi um saturday night like i said possibility i start a bit earlier on saturday so it might not be saturday night as much as starting around maybe saturday evening but that's just a possibility i can't guarantee it either way unfortunately that's just how it was i just want to put the possibility that might that might be the case so uh again thanks for watching have a great rest of your night have a great wednesday stay safe stay well do good, be good, all that. Uh, thanks for watching. And until another stream.